Ladies and gentlemen, even though we've seen a 15% correction from the 49k high, there is still some of that lingering greed from the ETF decision that happened just a week ago, and people are expecting Bitcoin to bounce upwards here. There's a sizable portion of the market that's hopeful for a recovery in this region, but that's simply not what the evidence suggests. We'll be getting into the evidence today from an hourly chart perspective, looking at a triangle formation, from the weekly chart perspective, looking into exhaustion, and from a daily chart perspective, looking into a potential rejection from the RSI. This correction could start sooner than you think. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a quick update today. There's not a massive amount to discuss, but we need to clarify one point. The point is this, this bounce we are seeing right now, right? Not only was expected, not only was predicted by me, we've got these yellow ascending support lines that are kind of acting as foundations to the Bitcoin uptrend. Bitcoin is still in an uptrend. Okay, that's very much true. It's been an uptrend since uh, September 11th, 2023. It's been a very strong uptrend, actually. It's been upwards, you know, 90% uh, over the course of 95%, you know, over the course of three and a half months without any sort of correction whatsoever. Everyone knows this by now. I sound like a broken record repeating it. But the fact of the matter is this. We've said over and over again that we will be seeing a rejection from this 48 to 52k level. That's exactly what we saw. In fact, we made a video predicting that literally on the day of the breakdown, 12 hours before we saw the breakdown, that played out correctly. We came down as we said our first target for that breakdown would be these yellow foundational support lines because these yellow lines are fundamental to sustaining the Bitcoin uptrend. When we break these lines, we will be in a downtrend, specifically when we break 40K, right? We've spoken about our lower targets in previous videos. I'll recap them right now. Our lower targets, right, for a breakdown of this uptrend, which I expect to be happening, okay, are 38.5K, that is our first target, okay? Our second target is 35.4K, and then our third target is 32K to 28K, okay? 28K being the lowest we could possibly go without flipping macro bearish, right? I believe there actually is a chance here that Bitcoin could go all the way to 28K without flipping macro bearish. That's due to Fibonacci analysis I did yesterday. If I was to predict which support zone was most likely to hold, I'd probably be looking at 38.5K or 32K. I think 28K still, even though Fibonacci predicts it, is a little bit too pessimistic. Uh, I don't really see the need for us to go that low. 32K or 38.5 seems reasonable. Uh, 35K itself also seems reasonable, but it's not really much of a major level. It's just kind of a medium... Uh, a level of medium importance that we've just put in there because there's a massive gap between 32k and 38.5k so we need something in between but basically i've got various targets none of which are particularly uh you know more favorable than others i suppose even though i just gave you two favored ones i'm not like 100 certain it's going to go to a specific price point i just know it's going down uh and, and i know that and i've been saying that since 48k to 52k and we are down so far 15 percent on the correction but right now as predicted we are bouncing and as happens with bouncers, people start to think that there is a light in the end of a tunnel. People start to think that, hey, look, we found support. We're going to bounce up now and go to new highs. And that's what's happened throughout the entirety of this upwards trend. And I think this upwards trend over the last three and a half months has perhaps been a plague on Bitcoin to a certain extent because every single uh, small drop has been eaten up by a bounce that recovers into new highs. That's just not how TA works in a general normal market. We have to understand and we have to remember, right? Because it's not even about understanding at this point. I think everyone agrees. We have to remember that the last three and a half months of price action since September 11th has not been normal. It has been polluted by a fundamental narrative that has been at the forefront of every move. That is the ETF narrative. Now, the ETF narrative for the most part is over, or at least it's nowhere near as strong as what it was during the lead up to ETFs, right? Because anticipation is always stronger than the reality. Uh, and now we are back in more or less a normal market. We are back in more or less a market that is dominated by TA. We know this to be true because we rejected from a TA level. We found support on a TA support, and we've also formed a TA triangle right here. We'll get into that triangle in a second. My claim in this video, right, that I've already half made and I'll continue to make, is that this bounce will be knocked down. I do believe so. I believe this bounce will either be knocked down right now within this triangle, which we'll discuss in a second, or at 44.7K. At one of those levels, this triangle, this, this bounce will be knocked down and we will drop below these yellow lines to see a more extensive correction. That is my belief and that is what I'm proposing in this video here today. Looking at the RSI, right? Because we know in the price chart, we have a triangle, we'll look at it in a second. It's actually a bearish pennant formation. But on the RSI in the daily chart, we have this descending wedge formation that was playing out. We dropped below this descending wedge formation. We're coming up above to it right now on this bounce and we will likely be rejecting from the bottom line of that wedge 
and seeing a continued downside move. So I'm expecting a bearish resistance support flip on this descending wedge formation on the RSI. Not really expecting it, but I'm seeing it as a possibility. Now that's in accordance or that's at the same time uh, in correlation with this bearish uh, pennant formation forming. Okay, look at this bearish pennant on the screen right now, marked in pink. Okay, it's forming from the 13th of January, 2024. We see this bearish pennant formation clearly forming. Three retests of the downside line, two retests of the upside line, very clear bearish pennant formation. In fact, if we're bringing this pink line back even further, we can see it kind of extends quite roughly to previous weeks, making the top line uh, very valid as well. Bearish pennant formations, of course, generally break downwards. And if we're taking measured moves from bearish pennants, we usually take them from the top of the move that led up to the pennant to the first retest of the bottom of the pennant. And we can see that extension of that move from a reasonable breakout point would actually take Bitcoin to 35K, right? That's where an extension of this bearish pennant would take us. Now, I don't usually take measured moves too seriously, and so I won't do it in this case. But I certainly can say that the fact that we have a bearish pennant with a measured move of 35K I'm not going to say that's, that's giving us a 35k prediction because I don't, I don't take measured moves too seriously, but I certainly will say it's not good. And I certainly will say it doesn't leave a good taste in the mouth of the Bitcoin investors right now. Now, whether this pennant actually breaks down or up is irrelevant to the fact that Bitcoin is likely to break down and not go to new highs, right? <clears throat> and by that, I mean in the short and medium term, I do believe that Bitcoin is long-term bullish. Even if we were to break this pennant to the upside, and there is a possibility we do so, I believe there will be strong enough resistance at 44.7k to knock us back down and see a breakdown below these yellow lines. But I believe it would be preferable if Bitcoin just went downwards right now. The problem with going downwards right now, even though we have a bearish pennant, is that, and the reason why I'm not 100% certain of it, is that we haven't seen a bounce at all, okay? And we've seen a move downwards at 15%. Now, I know that we're so exaggerated upwards in the price action and we don't necessarily need to see a bounce, but it does generally stand to reason that when you reach a major support zone, like what we have reached here with these three yellow lines, you generally see a small bounce, you see a clear lower high, and you see the start of a downwards trend when that lower high gets rejected and all of the hopes for it becoming a higher high are invalidated. That's what you generally see. So I'm not ruling out the possibility for a more extensive bounce, but I certainly am saying that it's very, very unlikely that we just break past 49k without going down further. That just seems utterly ridiculous. I mean, literally, I, I don't know what would have to happen on the charts for that to occur. I think every single metric of TA, of TA, aside from Elliott Wave Theory, which is, by the way, the biggest joke in technical analysis, because it's so subjective, so subjective, right? You ask 10 different people to draw Elliott Wave Theory, uh, you know, five-step correction or a five-step impulse, and they'll all come up with a different chart, okay? Because no one really knows. I know there are rules for it, of course. I teach it in my course, by the way, so I'm very educated on it. But no one really knows fundamentally, right? There's no agreed sentiment on what constitutes uh, a move. And even within the bounds of Elliott Wave Theory, you can come up with various different charts saying various different things. But basically what I'm saying is this. I think it's very unlikely Bitcoin breaks 49k without a significant correction. I think we will go lower. I do not think this is the bottom. I think there is a short-term bounce potential that is possible here. But ultimately, we need to be looking at this bearish pennant formation in the immediate term. We need to be looking at this uh, daily chart RSI rejection here in the immediate term as well. Just looking at the weekly chart structure, we can see the fragility of Bitcoin. Uh, and we can see that you know, as per the upwards trend, the upwards trend is not broken yet, right? It's not actually broken down yet. There's no confirmation at the moment of an extended correction. It's just a suspicion. Uh, the same thing is showing on the weekly chart, but that doesn't mean there's not weakness, right? Weekly chart, we can see there's very, two very clear levels here. Uh, 41.3K, which we saw candle closes on top of, and then 43.8K, which we saw candle closes reject from. Now we've seen a double top from 43.8K on the weekly chart candles, which is indicative of us going downwards soon. And we can see that if we do go downwards, when we do get a confirmed close, if we do get a confirmed close, which I think will occur, on the weekly chart, below the lower red level at 41.3K, what will we be facing, right? Because when we see a breakdown, we need to look for resistant uh, support zones, because that's what stops a breakdown. And if we're looking at the weekly chart perspective, which perhaps is overly diluted, but you can see that just no real proper base was built on this, on this move upwards here. And the reasoning is, obviously, we moved upwards too quickly without any correction whatsoever. So we've got this situation where we've found a kind of plateau on Bitcoin. We've found kind of a platform. And if we lose this platform, we've got no base for support that was formed on the way upwards. And so it's fragile. You know, it's one of those situations, uh, it reminds me of the, I don't know why this comes to mind, but... Uh, when when Germany was was invading uh, the USSR in World War II, you know we're going to kick in the front door, the whole structure is going to come tumbling down. It reminds me of that. There's no structure 
uh, here. There's no support that was built on this way upwards. And so if we do fall downwards, it could, it could be quite rapid and it could be quite violent. And this is why I'm not completely ruling out something like 28k or 32k, even though I understand it's slightly pessimistic and we don't need to go there. I'm not ruling it out because I understand that this move has no real basis, no real support formed. It went too quickly. Uh, and Ethereum is actually a different story, interestingly enough, and this one discussed yesterday. There could be quite a bit of a deviation between altcoins and Bitcoin to an extent. I do think Ethereum will go down, right? And I don't think the Bitcoin dominance top is in for this cycle. But I think on this particular correction, if we're looking at what happened with Bitcoin. You know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight green candles in a row with no correction. Ethereum didn't have that, guys. It saw four in a row, and then it saw a red candle, three more, and then a red candle, green candle, green candle, red candle. It found support on this major base. <clears throat> that was the major support zone during 2021 and major resistance zone during 2022. It kind of flipped that zone. It moved upwards. There's much more structure to the Ethereum move. And I think that Ethereum is, is actually in a, pretty, a, a much better position than Bitcoin going to this correction. I don't think it will go upwards. I certainly think it will go downwards, but it's certainly in a better off position than Bitcoin. Because as you, as you noticed, right, all the attention over the last three months has been on Bitcoin. People don't care about Ethereum in the last three months. It's been Bitcoin, right? Because Bitcoin is the one with the ETFs. Ethereum hasn't mattered too much. And so everyone's focused on Bitcoin. They've all bought Bitcoin. That explains Bitcoin going much higher than Ethereum did. Uh, if you were comparing weekly candles and percentage of gains and all that kind of stuff. So there is more kind of foundation on Ethereum right here. Uh, not much at all on Bitcoin. It's, again, it's one of those situations where if this does occur, if we do see a weekly candle close below 41.3k, this could get pretty bad pretty quickly. So we need to watch out here. I'm not saying it will, I'm saying it could. Uh, but I certainly am saying that Bitcoin is not looking good right now. I'm certainly saying there's no real reason to believe whatsoever that the move is over. There's no real reason to believe that the de the, the downtrend is over, I should, or, the, or not even downtrend, because it's not a downtrend. The correction is over, right? There's no reason to believe that Bitcoin is done correcting now and it should go up with new highs. The fact of the matter is the correction is probably just getting started, right? That, that's what I'll say from a charting perspective. That's what I'm seeing right now. Does that rule out the possibility of a short-term bounce to something like 44.7K? No, not at all, right? But it certainly doesn't mean the Bitcoin is bullish right now. Okay, that's what I wanted to say in this video. It's quite simplistic. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please go ahead and check out the VIP group on Telegram. VIP group, we trade altcoins four times a week. We have a 78.52% win rate on altcoins. Absolutely exceptional stuff. If you're interested in VIP, you can get in that group. You can get access to those altcoin, tra altcoin trading signals and you can get access to a 24 seven, uh, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours. Uh, VIP discussion group. We've got 120 members who are throwing messages in there constantly, looking at coins, looking at the market in general. Get in that group. It's very useful. It will be very useful during the bull market as well. And then, <clears throat> speaking of utility during the bull market, the Crypto Academy's Become a Trader 10 unit course will teach you everything you need to know about how to trade. And obviously, if we're going into the bull market soon, you need to know how to trade so you can make the most of it. This is your time to do that. Everything about the courses on the website, you can read up about it and you can throw us an email at the email address cryptoacademycourses at gmail.com. And then finally, obviously going into a bull market or whatever you're doing here. If you're watching this video, you probably bought cryptocurrency at some point. You probably sold it at some point. You need an exchange to do that. And with all the drama going on in the last two years about exchanges, you need a good exchange, a reliable exchange, an exchange that has never been hacked before. That's where BingX and BitGet come in. BingX and BitGet have never been hacked before. BingX is global non-KYC and BitGet is global KYC minus the USA. So take your pick depending on whether you can access these exchanges. Again, BingX is global non-KYC. Uh, so very low trading fees on both exchanges. Never been hacked before. Protection funds in case they are hacked and my referral links are down below for discounts and rewards. Guys, check out those exchanges. Check out everything I discussed there. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you tomorrow. Cheers.